All right. Uh, we're going to tie some blue water flies. The first one we're going to start with is uh, your typical sailfish fly. And the blue water sailfishing has gotten pretty popular in the last few years. A lot of the Central American countries are getting a lot easier to get to. They're getting a lot better boats. Um, the captains and the mates are becoming a lot more familiar with fly fishing techniques. And it's a heck of a lot of fun. So uh, we're going to teach you how to make a big pink sailfish fly. And we're going to do it uh, in a few different steps. The first thing you got to do is select your hooks and prepare your hooks and rig them. Uh, this will be a tube fly eventually. So we will not be tying our materials directly onto the shank of the hook. Uh, these hooks in particular are uh, pretty much designed for this. This is a hook made by Owner. It's the Owner Aki, A-K-I, and these are size 6 uh, Not the biggest ones they make, but this has plenty of hooking power, and this is really all you need for sailfish or fly rod size marlin, any of the pelagic blue water species. So the, what we're going to do is we're going to rig these with a piece of 100-pound test, uh, just regular monofilament. That's all you need. Um, it's pretty abrasion resistant, and that's the main thing we're looking for. Uh, if you buy this stuff uh, in bulk from any retailer, it's going to come wrapped in a spool, and that's not very useful. You need to straighten it. So for the 100-pound test, as well as the tube fly material, which was also curled at one point, put it in a PVC pipe that's cut to the size of your dishwasher and run your dishes on high with a heat cycle to dry them and your monofilament and your tube fly material will be perfectly straight when you take it out. So the first thing we're going to do is you want to kind of measure it against what will be the overall length of your fly. Um, a couple things to think about here. The, the mouth on a sailfish is about that wide. So you want to make sure you'll have at least one hook within that area. Um, whether he eats the head of the fly or the body of your fly. And uh, he will eat wherever. They just come up and snack right on it. But you just kind of want to measure it out because then we're going to attach him with our monofilament for the overall length of the fly. Um, IGFA rules state that your hook cannot be past the tail of a fly if you're trying for a world record. Uh, the way I'm going to teach you to rig this anyway uh, is not IGFA legal, but if that's something you're concerned about, Something you want to pay attention to. So the way we're going to attach this, uh, it's the most fail-safe method I've found. It's not involving knot at all. It's not IGFA legal. But we're going to crimp this back hook on to our 100-pound test that's been straightened. So we're going to run the crimping sleeve over the mono, run the mono up and through the eye of that 6 ot owner Aki hook, and then back into the sleeve. Her pliers can come in handy here. Now we've got that hook and a loop with the crimp. Holding our pliers, we're just going to ease that into place. You do want some loop there. And using some crimping pliers, we're just going to gently crimp this twice. trim away our tag. You do not want to use your size 24 blue winged olive midge scissors for this work. Use some old beaters or some wire cutters. And we have attached our back hook, our trailer hook, onto our monofilament. Now we're going to grab our vise and we'll attach this monofilament to our trailing hook. And to attach this, you can use anything you want. I am always a fan of a little flash of red in any streamer or saltwater pattern. I just happen to be using red, um, size B, big fly thread. Uh, you just want something that's really going to crimp down and allow you to get a very tight base uh, on this shank with your monofilament. So again, I'm just going to size up against my tailing feather. It will be the body of the fly and making just kind of a rough guess. Keeping in mind that, you know, the sailfish mouth's about this wide. You want to hook in that target no matter where he eats your fly. I'm going to use that as a reference point. And 
from that reference point. Tie this 100 pound mono onto the back of the shank, that owner six odd Aki. And we don't have to get real pretty with this. This is just to keep it in place. We're gonna be epoxying over it and that epoxy is what's really gonna cement the mono onto the shank. And again, using your beater scissors, trim the tag. And we're just gonna wrap our thread back over the mono and then come up to the head of that. Whip finish however you desire. And that's it. You just completed the toughest part of the of a uh, sailfish fly. Now to get this monofilament and this trailing hook here that we've attached with the crimp, really cemented onto the shank of our head hook, I just used real quick setting, three minute epoxy. When you play with epoxy, I've found that you really want to use a metal, like a bodkin or a small piece of steel, an old hanger. Um, if you use wood, like a toothpick, it will brown that epoxy prematurely. And this doesn't have to be pretty. Um, the goal is to make sure that every edge fore and aft is covered in epoxy. You don't need to worry about leaving any room for a head. Now we're just gonna set this aside while we complete the rest of the fly. The rest of the fly is gonna be a tube. Uh, give this epoxy a time to cure and harden and uh, we'll come back to it once we have the body of the fly done. So the body of the fly is a tube and the reason it's a tube Tubes will give you much more length. Uh, you, you are not gonna find a hook with a shank that's 14 inches long to tie one of these flies on. Nor do you want it, because it acts like a lever and it's just gonna pull that fly right out of its mouth. So tube flies are new for a lot of people. Um, it is absolutely something you should not be intimidated by. They're the easiest flies to tie in the world. A Couple different ways to go about it. This is a tube fly vise. Uh, it's made by Renzetti. Honestly, uh, you can get an adopter kit that is about 12, 14 bucks, has all the different sizes that you want. Um, you can buy the different size tubes. Uh, and it's just kind of trial and error, but play with it. It's really easy. Uh, if you do go a kit version, they make tubings that is specifically designed for the diameter of the mandrels that uh, you would slide in. And in this case, you'd put that right into the jaws of a normal vise and you've got a tube fly vise. Um, the tube fly components are basically in two pieces. You have what will be our hard uh, plastic tubing of a smaller diameter. And this is going to be used for the main body of the fly. This is also going to be what we'll be sliding our popper head onto. The second piece of that is what absolutely looks like it comes from an aquarium store. This is the softer plastic tubing, also known as junction tubing, because when you tie a tube fly, you use this softer material, it slides right on your tube, and then you rest the eye of your hook into that, as you'll see when we complete the fly. Um, so that provides the junction between the tube and the hook. So what we will do is you don't need that long of a tube fly body for this fly. You want your junction tubing to uh, match up where you want the eye of our first hook to be. This is the feather we measured our hooks against. So we know the eye of our first hook is gonna be somewhere in here. So the eye of that hook is going to go into my junction tubing. I'm gonna to wanna to tie my fly above that junction tubing. The eye of the first hook will be in there. The eye of our trailer hook should be someplace back here. Now we also need to take into account how long the popper head is gonna be. And the popper head in this case is just a little foam block. I bought these in Michaels. Go in there and take a look around. These are also available in fly shops, but I bought a bag of these. There's like a dozen for I think 89 cents. And this will be our popper head for this sailfish fly. So the popper head is gonna sit probably about there. And that leaves us a half an inch to three quarters of an inch for us to tie our fly. Actually, the fly would be tied in here above the junction tubing. You want three quarters of an inch to a half inch to allow yourself a lot of fly, we're gonna be using a lot of schlapen, a lot of marabou, it's gonna build a lot of bulk without any weight, but we wanna be able to accommodate for that bulk. Kind of set it down, measure your tube, once we've accommodated for the fly and the popping head, and then 
I'm just going to trim my tube. And you're going to want to kind of massage it back into a circular shape, make sure there's no real tough edges, but I mean, we're tying with 100 pound mono, so you shouldn't be too concerned about that. That will be the body of our tube fly. The hard plastic tubing that we will be tying and that the popper head will rest upon once it's finished. And then the junction tubing, which will be our junction between the tube and our hooks. So I'm just going to remove the vandrel from this fly tying vise. If you were using one of the standard vise tools, uh, you would just slide the mandrel out, slide the mandrel into the tube fly material up to the nose, put this back in the vise, and then I like to really rest that junction tubing and use it as kind of a friction point to get a nice solid lock um, to prevent this from spinning. It will spin a little bit and that's fine. I'm going to uh, switch out from the big fly thread that we used to cement our mono onto the shank for our hook rig. And uh, we're going to be using that doing a couple different materials. The first material we're going to use is uh, called Schleifen. And uh, this is a chicken feather. They used to be very hard to find uh, in this length, but Whitting Farms is now selling them. So we'll just attach our thread above the junction tubing. And we will just tie around the body of this tube with our pink schleifen feathers. And you don't need to worry about the butts, uh, keeping them nice and neat. That's all gonna be under the head of a tube at some point. But you do just kind of want to go around your fly and make sure that you get nice even coverage of the feathers around the fly. Uh, I'm using this big fly thread again. I think you'll find it's very, very strong and uh, it will not break while you torque on these feathers. Uh, you do want to get them somewhat tight because they'll tend to slide on this plastic tubing. You know, normally I use pink thread, but just to, to kind of fill into the body, red works just as well as does white. Uh, I think you'll find that it is size and shape on this fly, much more so than color, that is going to trigger a strike from a billfish. So I've tied my schleipen on in the round. This shank of this tube is completely covered in the schleipen. And now just to kind of hide the head and to add some more bulk without a whole lot of weight, we're just going to do a couple rounds of marabou. And this will really give your fly the quality of motion. Um, and just kind of put shoulders on it as well, providing some bulk. We're going to do this in a way that covers up our head um, from all the feathers that we just tied on there. And again, we're going to want to do a complete circle around the shank. And I'm going to be trimming the stems of these marabou feathers as I go, just to keep it nice and neat and a little bit smaller head. If you leave it to the end, it can be a real mess. And with each feather I tie in, I'm going to align it with the tips of the previous feather and continue to make sure that I've got good coverage around the body of this tube. And at this point, I'm just going to tie myself ahead, locking down the butts of those feathers, making sure everything's nice and tight and clean. I'm going to go ahead and whip finish and you're gonna to wanna to kinda of work it back down the tube as you do this knot. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna be really locking this down with a lot of head cement and, and glue. I prefer zappy gap. Just trying to get a somewhat neat head. I'm gonna tie it off. I've got a couple stems here that are tails from the old schleifen feathers we tied in. I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit. All right, now we're just going to finish this off with some whip finishes at the head of that fly. And that is it. Uh, that's your sailfish fly, basically, on the tube. Uh, I'm going to go in with some Headstrong, Zappa Gap works, any glue, and just really get a good base of glue on this head. Really kind of rub it into the strands of that thick tying thread. At this point, the body of our fly is complete, and we will go on to uh, the head. Uh, the All right, now that we've completed the body of our tube for our sailfish fly, we're going to be completing the head. And the head is a pretty key component. You're looking for something that's going to displace a lot of water, has a wide surface area. 
but is also not incredibly huge, so it's tough to cast. Um, these are little foam cylinders I bought at Michael's Craft Shop, and we're going to prepare this uh, as the head of our sailfish fly. First thing I'm going to do is get my bodkin, my little steel tying tool, nice and hot. Uh, we're just going to slide right through this foam cylinder like you'd skewer a marshmallow on a camp out and melt the foam around our bodkin a little bit so we can slide our tube through it. So we're going to go nice and slow. It goes through very easily. Look on it on the back side. If it's too high, you can adjust before you really widen that hole out. And then using that warm metal bodkin, you're really just trying to create a hole that we'll be able to slide that tube through. That should be fine. Once you've got your hole, you're going to take uh, some prismatic tape. Uh, this is used on a northeast bluefish and uh, striped bass pattern called Bob's Banger, I think is when it was originally invented for, and you kind of trim it to size. I'm going to use the whole length of it. This is going to provide the flash around our sailfish fly. Uh, so I'm just going to remove the adhesive backing from the back of this tape and line it up with either end of your foam cylinder and work your way around it. Now the diameter of this cylinder is such that we're going to have to use a little bit more. We'll be using two strips of this material. Start this one where the other one stopped. You may want to overlap just a little bit, and that will really help uh, with the adhesiveness of that. We're going to go right around to where we're going to be at the edge. And to keep this fly for no other reason than purely even to the eye, it wouldn't matter if we had extra bulk, uh, but to keep it nice and even, we're going to trim off the extra. Put that aside wrap it down. You'll notice that uh, these fibers are stuck together, so just kind of grab a few of them, pull them apart to give a real nice skirt uh, to the head of this popping fly. And this is going to provide you your flash, but you'll notice that this is a very stiff material. This will not become entwined in the bill of your sailfish or marlin. This will not keep your fly uh, hung up in the fish's nose and not in his mouth. Uh, the last step, everything in salt water has big old eyes on it. I encourage you, if you haven't seen it, check out the Discovery Channel's Blue Planet. And there's pictures of marlin and sailfish feeding on schools of fish that will definitely uh, change the way you tie your flies or, or look at saltwater fly fishing. Um, when these little bait fish are in schools and endangered, all you see is eyes. These eyes are a half inch in diameter, prismatic stickers basically, black pupil. Uh, you just peel them right off and stick them. Uh, if you're concerned, you got to keep in mind that these sailfish flies are in the water maybe, maybe five minutes in an entire day of fishing if you don't hook a fish. So durability is not really an issue. I will sometimes epoxy these on uh, to make it nice and durable and it also kind of pulls it out and really makes it look like the goggle of a fish's eye. But at that point our head is done. We're going to take our tube fly out of the vise. We're going to open this up just like a skirt or a flower or anything else, skirt on a spinnerbait. Slide our tube through the hole that we just melted into that foam head. Pull that pink flash back around the body of your fly. And then if you wanted to rig it and uh, keep it in a stretcher box or in a large tackle box or something for a day's fishing, Remove the hooks that you've rigged. And again, just separate the feathers so that junction tubing in the middle of this fly is exposed, kind of like the mouth on an octopus. And you're just going to slide the eye of your two six-aught rigged hooks into that junction tubing. And you have a rigged sailfish fly ready to fish.